Hey guys and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to show you the Alt F4 League race at Barcelona. If you're interested in F4, if you like clean racing, you're tired of getting punted in the pubs and people dive bombing you from four and a half seconds back, which I don't even know if that's a thing, but let's pretend that it is. If you're tired of that kind of nonsense and you really want a clean league of people who respect you, respect racing, and enjoy having good clean fun, you should check us out. There is a link in the description below. But you could also go to sundaynightskippy.com, which will forward you to our Discord, where you can ask questions, meet everybody in the league, and get yourself set up for our next race. So, this race was interesting. It was a race where I found myself pretty much racing myself. Um, it's not to say that there's a massive lack of overtaking and battling and things like that, but it's one of those races where you find yourself on an island, and you're really focused on not making mistakes so if you're racing the track you're always racing other people but in this race for me it was really um, a mental race it was about having the opportunity to make good corners put together good laps and just not make silly mistakes that destroy the car wreck my race wreck other people's races lose tons of time lose positions where on pace i shouldn't have lost those positions so it's an interesting race. It's definitely one that uh, is a massive challenge. I find it easier in some weird way to just race people versus being on my own trying to just not make silly mental mistakes along the way. So I hope you enjoy it. It's a little bit different. Uh, and again, I just wanted to say that I genuinely appreciate the views, the likes, the comments. Uh, it really does keep me going. So appreciate those thank you provide feedback let me know what i'm doing right what i'm doing wrong i do genuinely take all of it to heart so enjoy the race and i'll catch you guys later Ten all right minutes. heat race is getting started 10 minutes okay, Chris. looks like we're starting p6 saw pim jump the start a little bit there super unfortunate get a nice getaway so it's been really interesting to Barcelona. Barcelona. Sorry, I just can't help myself from saying that. Um, the internship, you should watch it. Great movie. Here at Barcelona. Get a good getaway, though. Looks like uh, Nicholas and Jason, side-by-side -side action, going into turn two, turn one. Everybody spreads out, though, a little bit. Single file. One thing I noticed that I struggled with as I watched the replay back earlier today, getting into corners uh, in the opening opening lap or so as we're really tight with one another. I don't know if it's a VR thing for me or what, but I feel like I let off a little too early because I certainly don't want to let off too late and run into anybody. It seems to put me a little bit on the back foot, something I definitely need to work on. Getting through this first lap nice and clean though. Trying to settle in, get the tires warmed up. Definitely uh, Apex was lava in that, that instance. Can be a little sketchy on first lap though. Cold tires. Still should have been touching that curb. This week has been interesting for me. I, the pub race that I did, which I did put a video out about, <laughs> showed exactly how you shouldn't race Barcelona. Uh, I think I spun myself out twice in that race. Very easily could have spun myself out at least two more times. So I was very mindful of that going into this race. Heat race, thankfully, 69 degree ta track temperature. Some of the mid 70s. I mean, it's literally only like a six or seven degree difference. Difference, but it makes a huge difference at this track. It can feel very greasy, very just rough, rough to get. Uh, for some of the fast corners or get back on the throttle early really have to really have to be careful be conservative you can see Nicholas there got a little sideways he's going to lose some ground here to Jason not quite enough for Jason to make a move starting P6 in the heat race definitely happy about that definitely some big hitters um who are normally with us week to week that weren't here. Won't call them out by name for fear of missing someone, but uh, Grid was definitely on the smaller side this week, which is unfortunate. It's always great to have a great 
you know, full field of people. And if F4 is something you're interested in iRacing and you're cool with uh, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time start times on Thursdays, I would highly recommend checking us out. The link to our Discord is actually called SundayNightSkippy.com. There is a link in the description. I would highly, highly recommend checking it out. Great group of people. Very respectful and clean racing. Uh, literally the exact opposite of what you see Sorry, I have a slow in down the pubs. This slowdown was uh, was a tough one. I, I didn't even notice that <laughs> Decker had found himself uh, in our little fight here. But then I saw that red <laughs> that red car. I was like, wait, why are you here? Yeah, that slowdown was uh, unfortunate for him and probably more so for us. Created a little bit of chaos. Three wide going into turn one. Did the smart thing, backed out. Just trying not to give John too much of a too much opportunity to take advantage. And thankfully, he didn't have the best line going to turn one because we were all kind of there together. So I was able to at least maintain position. It's Decker and Jason battling right there for. Still hanging with them. Feeling good about my pace this week, really. Pace this week has been pretty decent. Leo helped me out a little bit, gave me some tips the other night. Made a big difference in the way I approached the track the rest of the week. Um, and I think, I think you see the result in the race that I released the other night, where I did spin out and I did make mistakes, but I found myself pushing a little bit harder than maybe I would normally. And, trying to find just trying to find a good place to live where I can have good pace but still be predictable and still consistent and not wreck myself we'll see as we go through spoiler alert the feature race and the heat race that comes to fruition a little bit unfortunately for Nicholas there lost it coming out of the corner and then, you know, as, as I normally do, seemingly somebody else makes a mistake. I seem to seem to add one of my own, so push it got a little too a little too uh, aggressive going into that that first corner of the chicane there. And as opposed to trying to fight John where he would would have been side by side going into the entry of the chicane, I kinda realized my momentum was lost, so I just backed out of it, let John have the spot and figure out how to fight fight the next corner. But that was a tough situation too, just because I'm thinking about that, you know, in the moment, like, okay, I've lost some momentum, probably give it up to John, but I don't want to give it up to JR, so how do I kind of safely get myself back into the right position? And thankfully that did work out. Trying to focus on the exits, get good exits, have an opportunity to attack John. I feel like I did that the last couple corners, but the straights or getting into the next corner, just not enough time to actually get alongside and make the right move. Again, Alt F4, we're not dive bombing, we're not doing anything stupid. We're trying to treat this as realistic as possible, which leads to really good, clean, respectful racing, so not lunging it in there. Gonna take my time, try to make a good proper move. That was exactly what I needed to see from John. Fortunately for him, but getting up on that uh, sausage curb. Definitely uh, lost some momentum for him. I was able to capitalize. As we drag race down into turn one, I've got the momentum. As you can kind of see, he's letting out of it a little bit. And then as we get into turn one, he lets out completely to let me have that overtake and make it happen. And as I kind of look at the names in, in the race at this point in time, I'm sitting about where I feel like I should be. Me, John, and JR pretty similar in pace those those guys are my my fight I feel like I haven't gone into this race so being in the front of that group 
uh, I'm feeling good about where I'm sitting in the moment for sure. You know, Jason, Decker, Leo, uh, Thomas is new to the league. He had great pace the entire night. And, uh, those guys just seem to be a little faster than me, or in some cases a lot faster than me. Uh, Nicholas is certainly in that group too. Unfortunately, he had a little spin for himself in the heat race here, so he's not in that top group at the moment. But I feel like I'm maximizing my outcome at this point in the race. One thing I really find interesting about watching these races back is looking at my input telemetry. <laughs> uh, sometimes I feel like it actually looks pretty good and sometimes I feel like a monkey driving a car and I have no idea what I'm doing playing Happy Feet and um, yeah something I should probably spend more time looking into and trying to optimize a little bit. I'm sure there's pace in there for sure. So as we start the final lap in the heat race there's been some pretty pretty decent action. We've had some spins in front of us, had some overtakes, uh, a slowdown that created a little chaos for us here in the four to seven range. Made the, made the race interesting. But these heat races go by so quick, um, which I do enjoy. But it's uh, it's tough. It's tough because the feature race being 40 minutes, there's just so much more that happens there it's it's just a completely different race this is much more like a pub but in terms of the way you approach it with time and maybe having to push something that you might not push in the feature race because you have so much more time in the feature race there's no pit stop obviously in the heat race where there is in the feature so trying to figure out that timing is really important but the, the contrast the two races they truly couldn't be more different but going into feature race starting P5 is, is truly optimizing any outcome here. Unfortunately, John there had a spin coming out of that corner. And I noticed it as I looked up in the mirror, and I wish I had not noticed it, because I'm more likely to not make the mistake myself if I don't notice somebody else doing it. Thankfully, thankfully I was uh, able to chill out a little bit finish this heat race p5 not making any major mistakes after seeing somebody else make a mistake i just tend to do it myself i don't know why but it's kind of a thing so yeah finishing p5 super happy with that getting into the 44s that, i mean that's uh honestly can't ask for much more so super happy with that finish let's get into the feature so as we get gridded up here for the feature race, I'm I'm actually really nervous. Um, I was I was a little nervous in the heat race, but for some reason when we ticked over to the feature, I actually got like super nervous. I really just don't want to make any mistakes. It sounds so simple, but I'm really feeling it in this moment. So I actually had a pretty good getaway. Again, we're going to try to get into turn one as I'm already feathering the throttle, which seems a little aggressive, but should have should have been on the throttle a little bit more. Probably could have had more of an opportunity to beat Jason into these the first and second corner if I had just uh, maintained my position. Totally fine to, to spread out again. This is a 40-minute race, but I probably shouldn't have been quite as conservative. Could have ended up in the same place, but and that would have been fine, but slightly less on the conservative side would have been a good thing I think. I feel like I need to get to a point where I, I'm I am content with being you know the top half of the second group if you will of drivers in terms of pace but you know, I need to continue that progression I think and maybe part of that is not being quite as conservative. Not going aggressive, not trying to be crazy but but also push a little bit. You know, this is a race after all. So unfortunately, yeah, I think some of that conservative nature, I'm six tenths back as opposed to, or maybe should have been two or three tenths. Um, looks like Thomas there had a little lock up. Nothing crazy. But settling in, going back to the nerves piece, the pub that I did the night before having spun out multiple times, just making really stupid mistakes. 
it, it had me nervous going into this race. Um, had me nervous going into the heat race, but as you saw, the heat race went through and was totally fine. So, <laughs> I, you know, as to why that doesn't create the confidence, I don't know. Um, unfortunately for me, it was almost like uh, you didn't mess up in the heat race, so you're more likely to do it <laughs> in the feature race, which is certainly not the correct mental approach to go into a 40 minute race with, but you know, that's just that's what it is. So something I need to, to figure out for myself and have more confidence in, in what I'm doing, but that was definitely the thought process going into this race, so my nerves were definitely high. But, you know, getting into the second lap, feeling better. I mean, that, that first lap, with the laps being, uh, the tires being cold, and you know, you just came out of a 10-minute heat race where your tires were hot, you felt pretty good with the car, you're running 44s, and then you instantly get into a 40-minute race where the tires are cold again, and it's so easy to forget that. It sounds so simple, but it's true. It's so so easy to forget it, and drive a little too hard on the first lap, and put yourself in a bad situation. So thankfully, you know, the confidence builds. You get through lap two and you're like, okay, cool, I'm here, I'm ready to do this, let's go. Back into the groove of things. So the confidence is definitely building, for sure. That was about the biggest Code Brown moment I feel like I've had in a while. I was not expecting that whatsoever, and I was far closer to uh, Thomas there than I would have liked to have been. I got very lucky to have not made significant contact with him. Unfortunately, that I lost a good second and a half or so on this lap as a result of that. Um, but super, super lucky that I was able to get out of town and not make contact. And as I as that happened, even watching it back, hitting right was the, was the move. Um, but didn't feel good about that, having to get into the sand and all that. Like that was just or the gravel trap, whatever it actually is. That was not at all uh, would have would have liked to have seen, of course. But thankfully that worked out. And my, as that happened, you know, it's just it's, it's one of those moments. You're in you're in the moment. You're battling. You're pushing. You're you feel like you're on the edge, even if, you know, it's you're on the edge for your pace, right? Like, I feel like I'm on the edge, um, something like that happens, and I have to maintain that race pace. I have to continue. I can't, you can't let it get to you. You can't let it affect what's going to happen next. Um, and that, honestly, is one of the biggest struggles I have. I've got to imagine that I'm not alone in that. I imagine a lot of people feel that way. Something happens, and it just, you get all tense, and it affects the rest of your race. Um... That is a thing by itself, and then losing, you know, a second and a half on that lap. That's a huge thing. JR is now 1.3 seconds behind, and I see that. I think sometimes to myself, I should just get rid of the relative. I can't do it for certain reasons. You know, it would be just not a good idea for a lot of reasons. Um, but I would perform better if I did not know where people were around me. Um, so yeah, that, that's where my mindset is at this point in the race. You know, we're about 11 minutes or so into a 40 minute race. We've still got a ways to go for the pit stop. Um, but I see the guys behind me. JR's quick. He, he really is somebody that I've identified and he likes to joke <laughs> that he's not a benchmark. He's my benchmark. He's my benchmark. And I'm, I'm going to say that for the rest of the season. He's ahead of me in the points. He's who I'm battling, you know, with in the points, and he's my benchmark. I want to beat JR every race, that's my goal. Um, so I see JR close to me, he's quick, he's not going to make mistakes, you can see his safety rating. <laughs> he, he doesn't do a lot of officials to be fair, but at the same time, like, he's going to finish these races with 0x like 99% of the time, so he's not going to make a lot of mistakes, he's kind of like the Terminator, he's always there, he's always coming. Um, it's, it's just not in his nature. So he's there. He's gotten close. Mazza is within range of him. Draft. And uh, Mazza's super quick. He has more pace than both of us. So I'm hoping that the two of them are going to battle a little bit and give me an opportunity to check out a touch. But what it really depends upon is me not making mistakes. And uh, 
That that is truly the name of the game at this point. Me and JR are close enough on pace that if I don't make any mistakes and he doesn't make any mistakes, we're gonna finish about 1.0 seconds between one another and I'm gonna have the position. Like that's just how it's gonna go. Um, I'm thinking about that and I think that's part of the problem for me. I'm actually thinking about that in the car, in the race right now and that's probably not where my mind should be. My mind should be focusing on not doing things like I do right there <laughs> and giving up a tenth or two here and there uh, and just focusing on my entries, my apexes, my exits and just doing that. Unfortunately that's not how it goes. I do make a couple mistakes and uh, We'll let it let it go forward here as as I make some more corrections and lose a couple more tenths along the way. You can see me looking off to the right a little bit. That's me looking down at the relative. I'm getting a feel for where those guys are. I know I made a couple micro mistakes there on that last corner or in that last lap. So I'm trying to get a kind of a mental picture of well, I made those mistakes. What what did that do to the delta? You can see that the two of them swap positions. Nicholas got in front, which really is kind of worst case scenario for me because he's got the pure pace to catch me up on his own. Um, but what that's also going to do is give Jr. an opportunity to stay in his uh, stay in his draft and uh, follow him along to catch me up as well. I'm making such massive mistakes. I mean, that, those three corners, that was, that was huge. That was huge. So as Nicholas gets really close here, I'm thinking to myself, one, he's going to have a run, and it's turn one no matter what. So I'm thinking, how can I do my best to optimize uh, letting him get by me, but trying to keep JR. He's, he's almost at like that perfect one second mark or somehow some way I can let I can let Nicholas get by me and maintain that gap. Unfortunately that's not quite how that works out. JR did a good job getting his turn one and maintained the momentum to keep within a second and keeping that draft. And my mindset right now is okay this is the order is right as far as Nicholas being in front of me I'm going to now do what JR was doing, utilize his draft as much as possible and see if there's any possible way to get those two or three tenths that we need to break break draft, draft from JR. So I'm trying to figure out when I want to pit. Don't really have any indication of what JR is going to do in that front. I was thinking about that. It would be nice to maybe pit a lap before him if I could make that work. I know for me, and I've seen it with other people, sometimes it's you get really comfortable right, riding behind someone. So if the person in front is not there anymore, it's pretty easy for the person who was behind to kind of be on their own air and then start making some some uh, interesting you know, mistakes or just, it just changes. The dynamic changes a little bit. You don't have quite the same perspective and some of those mistakes can crop in. So, I was thinking about that, like, God, you know, if I could get in a lap early, he's by himself for a lap. One, he's not in my toe, but two, maybe some of those mistakes might crop in. So I duck into the pits, and I don't know if he reacted to me or if it was his plan as well, but both hop into the pits together. I think I actually had a pretty good entry as well, which I would say is uh, unique for me, for sure. I'm still not 100% sure what I should be doing here. If I should just be on the gas and <laughs> it's going to let me out when it's supposed to. But that, that seemed to work out quite well. Got in pretty quick. Got what I needed. Still came out ahead. Kind of perfect. Really was able to come out not into anyone anyone's race or anything like that. We were able to just have a nice open open track as we left the pits, which is certainly optimal. So as we come around to start the final lap, you can see that from the relative, Nicholas has definitely created a nice gap for himself at 8 seconds. I'm about seconds, 7 seconds up on JR. Um, there was a lot of stuff that we skipped there in terms of time, but the reality of, of it was I was just putting in lap times. So there just wasn't a whole lot to show. 
I was living on an island, really just trying to focus and do my job. You can see that the rearview mirror is off. Um, I've actually muted chat. Like, it's just time to focus, time to put in the laps. Looking at the lap times on the bottom left, you can see it started to hit the 44s again. Actually ran my fastest lap of both the heat and the feature race in that final lap, or the last lap. Really found my pace, found my footing. The confidence was much higher. Really just the consistency was there. Everything was working out, so... At this point of the race, you know, just... It was, it really was a race against myself more than anyone else. I don't, I can't think of looking back at the race, both the heat and the feature. You know, there was an overtake here or there, but at the end of the day, it was, it was really just me racing against myself to not make any mistakes or any major mistakes to put myself in bad situations, whether it's incidents or, you know, massive loss of time, 20, 30 seconds, whatever. And uh, I was able to do it. Um, which was a great, great thing to see after the race that I had in the pubs the night before. Finishing P5 uh, with this group of guys, even with some of the big hitters missing. I mean, that's, that's, uh, I don't, really can't ask for anything more. Uh, definitely maximized my finishing potential in this race. Super pleased by it. Ended up really putting in some great times in the 44s along the way. So, yeah. Lots, uh, lots to appreciate from this race. Definitely enjoyed it. I hope you guys did as well. I'll catch you guys later.